Okay, here we have the AVO CT160 portable valve tester. Um, regarded quite highly by a lot of uh, people who uh, collect valves. The uh, system comes as a clamshell arrangement, the upper lid, lid and the base section where all the main electronics is kept and housed. Um, the unit uh, is capable of doing a GM test. This is uh, checking the gain of particular valves. It does a pass-fail, but also a, say, a gain test. So, I'm attempting today to uh, test a valve. We'll uh, just grab one out of the corner of here. And uh, this was a um, I've got 6BZ6 uh, valve. I don't know at all what it is. Just got it from the bottom of the box. And we'll check and just see if it's, uh, if it's actually meeting its specifications. The book, which normally comes with the AVO, um, lists all the various types of valves. And uh, I've opened it on the 6, 6BZ page. So we'll just have a closer look at that, shall we? You can look at the, uh, go to the right page. 6BZ6. So the book actually tells us that there's a, a series of numbers we have to dial in to the uh, CT160. 412, 365, 100. And with that I'll just go off and uh, dial those numbers in, which are actually placed, believe it or not, in the, uh, the upper switch system there at the top. I'll just put those numbers so in. So we've put in the correct numbers, 412, 365, 100, which is the uh, same numbering scheme that's uh, required from the book for the B, 6BZ6. 416, 365, 100. Further along the page, it tells you it's 6.3 heaters. We set the grid to 1 volts, anode and screen to 125. We need uh, an anode current setting of 14 milliamps. And we expect to see a GM milliamps per volt of a figure of 8. Okay, so going through all those settings, the first thing we need to adjust is the, the grid setting, which is uh, basically this here. If I can get in a bit closer, and I think it said 1, so we'll set it to the 1. We will then move across to the anode volts, and we'll set this to 125. It did say 125, didn't it? Have difficulty setting that as there's no setting for 125, but there is on this guy. Find out where the pointer is. There it is, there now, I think, isn't it? Yeah, we're set for 125. I'm just trying to get the light on it so you can see the setting. Right, there it goes. There you go, 125. Now, I presume that uh, this was probably meant to be about 150, 100 or 150 at least. So I'm going to put it to the 150 mark anyway. And see how we go. The heaters are to the left of it, and the outer scale selected, which is 6.3 volts. The very last thing we're going to set up is the anode current, and I think it was said. Let me have a look. 6B is at seven. It said 10 milliamps. So we'll set it for the 10. And put this down to zero. So, so there's a variable here, and there's a. Uh, switch setting in 10 milliamps to the side. This is the anode well, or electrode we're testing, so we'll go to anode 1. We're in currently the uh, heater continuity test. I'll just set the meter across, make sure she's meeting where she should be, and the meter is sitting where it should sit. Now the next thing we'll do is actually plug the valve in. So we'll take the valve, we'll find the requisite socket, which is the lower socket, and plug it in. The valve is in. Now at this stage the heaters aren't actually energised. We'll come back down to the uh, the settings and we'll let's try and move some light out of the way here so we can see a bit better. Okay. And we will now go to heater continuity and we're supposed to make sure that the line is still set near the short mark, which it in fact is. We then go through a number of anode tests and we try to make sure the meter stays higher than 25 megaohms. So all these are anode correction electrode to electrode tests. And finally we do a heater test. Now the 
now get a see that the heat is now starting to come on inside. And now we're really going to do our test. Now the minute you kick to this section, the meter will go up or down and you're meant to zero it. So we'll just go there, it's gone right over. We'll bring it down by adjusting the current. So we'll set it at zero. We then go to the GM. Now this is a, a sprung loaded pot which uh, puts the uh, the unit always in, let me get this right, uh, maximum grid I believe. So what we now do is rotate this to a GM figure expected of 6.8 and we should see whether the valve is good or bad. So going up to 6, 6.8 and you can see the meters deflect and cross into the good zone. So that's your simple uh, good bad test. The other test, and you can probably see it, is the zero set position here. This is a bit more accurate. We actually rotate into that area and we adjust the pot while it's in that zone for zero. If we can get it exactly right. Oh, there it is. It's quite sensitive. I'm just adjusting the anode current. Right. With that, we then adjust it further around until we get to the one milliamp per volt line, which is about there. And then you read off the GM. In this case, it's actually in excess of 6.5, which is a good sign. And it's about 7.1, 7.2. So we can ascertain that the tube is actually okay. Piers have no shorts. We can go across to check for gas. Put it into the next position gas while it's hot. And there is no, no indication of it being, being any problems. So, 6BZ6 tube seems good. Um, there are other ways of uh, adjusting either the anode or you can adjust the grid to balance and check. But uh, in this case, it's, uh, it's working quite well. So this is the CT160 valve tester doing a couple of very basic tests.